Sometimes even suicide takes a little know-how. In a moment, I'm going to give you a sedative, but before I do, isn't there something you'd like to tell me? Whatever it is, it can't be as dreadful as what you've just tried to do. I want to die. I nearly made it, didn't I, Doctor? You're alive, Miss Price. Do what the rest of us do. Make the best of it. Precisely the question I was going to ask you. You know, that was quite a hostile display. And you've no idea why. No, I... Well, I was never on Amanda's A list. You know, thinking back, though, she used to always set me up against father. He was quite a man, your father. Well, let's just say that he was a hard act to follow. You know, it's odd. Until he died, Amanda was one of the steadiest women in the world. She was like a rock. Amanda was very attached to your father? Oh, yeah, very. Yeah, she did everything for him. She managed the house. She... everything. Would your sister accept hospitalization? With her consent, of course. Well, it's a pity. A woman doesn't try to take a life twice in a single year without some deep emotional disturbance. Right now, a therapist might get through very quickly. He, he might get her to reveal the cause of that inner anxiety. You mean, like a confession? Call it that if you wish. Oh, good God, Doctor. What, what could a man possibly have to confess? Possibly, only a thought, an impulse, a feeling, an impulse she's never acted upon. But anyway, she feels guilty and she represses it. But it's still there, like some sort of monstrous secret, and it frightens her. Well, then maybe a, a companion in the house, maybe that would help. Well, what about your younger sister, Nell? I remember her staying here for a short while before your father died. Wouldn't she be willing to come back for a, a while, at least? Not Nell. Nell has never thought about anybody in the world but herself. No, not her. Well, clearly something has to be done. Otherwise, there's nothing to prevent your sister from having a third try. And succeeding. A doctor, what about a professional, an experienced nurse? You think a man would agree? If her only choice was a mental hospital, she'd have to, wouldn't she? Do it, Edward. Do it now. Meanwhile, you get some rest. You're carrying quite a load yourself. Thank you, Doctor. 
Good night. Last call. Do you want another? If you have one with me. Sorry, sir, if it's conversation you're looking for, the other girls have left. Maybe later. Look, I'm just the waitress from 62. 87.50 a week and tips. Tips good here. Do you want another drink? You know, with your qualifications, I think you could uh, do better, Miss Harper. How do you know my name? I understand you were a pretty good nurse. Nurse? <laughs> if I were a nurse, what would I be doing here? Maybe these have something to do with it. What are you? You a reporter? Not at all. What do you want from me? I might be able to offer you a job, but I have to know about this. I mean, now, you surely didn't marry a 90-year-old man for love. Now, you listen to me. For years, I looked after that old man. I was his nurse, his friend, the only person in the world that he could talk to. His family never even came to see him. They were just waiting for him to die. And you? He wanted to give me something, the only thing that he could, which was money. So he married me to do it. I see. The family took you to court and cheated you out of it. You know, I guess it's been pretty hard to get a job with all the publicity. I mean, like uh, this place. What kind of a job are you offering? I have a, a sick relative. She's going to need very special care. And what would it be? $25,000. Check. Here's my uh, card with my phone number on it. And uh, keep the change. Surprise? Come in, Miss Harper. I've been expecting you. Since I talked to you yesterday on the phone, I've been thinking. I'm still not sure. I know so little. Ah, but you did bring your suitcase, and that's beginning. Sit down. Obviously, I couldn't uh, couldn't discuss everything on the phone. You see, the person involved happens to be my sister. Amanda Price. She's the patient. She had a mental breakdown and... Well, she's still a little erratic. I have to have someone with her. I was hoping that you had had dealings with disturbed people. Occasionally. Okay. What would you expect of me? Not much, really. 
I have a housekeeper that comes in twice a week. Mrs. Gonzalez, you like her. She's been in the family for years. Amanda's alone a lot. She doesn't go out very much, and I want you to stay with her. The main thing I want from you is I have to know everything that goes on in the house. Amanda's mind the way it is. There's certain family affairs that I don't really want other people to know about. No other duties. Amanda, in the last two years, has tried to kill herself two different times. She will certainly try a third. And if she does, You mustn't fail. How would I be paid? Well, I... I think it's better at first to pay your regular nurse's salary. But within ten days of my sister's death, I will deliver to you in cash $25,000. Certainly, my esteemed brother must have filled you in on all the choice details. My uh, mental instability, my suicidal impulses. Not really, no. I do gather that there isn't much affection between you. Now, that should be an item for your nurse's notebook. I assume you're going to keep one. Madam is cheerful, Madam is moody, Madam had a bad night, Madam ate her porridge. And to whom, pray, do you expect to report all this delectable gossip? My brother, Dr. Thorne? I didn't intend to keep notes. Oh, come now. My brother, with Dr. Thorne's connivance, hired you against my will. You don't expect me to believe that you're not here to spy on me. Why? You're their Trojan horse. Don't play games with me, Esther. I play for keeps. Miss Price, I'm here simply to help you, if you'll let me. Good. I'll show you about. This is an old house, Esther, set in its ways. Nothing is to be moved or changed. I dine in here. I have breakfast and lunch in the parlor. I like things, Esther, not people. Things are far less dangerous. Treat them properly, and they do what they're supposed to do. How old are you? I'm 38. 
I think you could be pretty if you tried. I don't think about it much. I thought all women did. Miss Price, I have worked for a living all my life. Now, since there's no excuse, a pretty face brings in treasure. So I've learned. Come. This is my room. I've chosen to give you the room adjoining mine. It was my sister's until she went away. My sister liked pretty things, including herself. You'll have no trouble in finding mirrors. I'm sure I'll be very comfortable, thank you. In the future, I should like dinner promptly at seven. You may dine with me at the table if you wish. Thank you. Miss Price, this cupboard still seems to be locked. Indeed it is. About the house, there are other locked cupboards and doors. Please respect them. My experience with the honesty of servants has not always been reassuring. And I detest stoops. Dreams cost money. Pretty soon you'll be able to afford them, won't you? How about a lift? Thanks, I've got your sister's car. Oh, no, no. How's my dear sister these days? It's difficult to tell. I know one thing, she doesn't trust me. Well, at uh, least she trusts you with her fabulous heirloom. I wasn't sure I could still shift gears. How's your uh, schedule with Amanda? I mean, has she given you a day off yet? Tomorrow. How about dinner? Somehow I don't think your sister would like that. She needn't know. All right. Tomorrow. What happened? Oh, the ground, it shakes. Earthquake. You do not feel it? Nothing. I must have been driving when it happened. Oh, it was a little one, but it throws down the parts. Nobody hasn't broken any crystal. Where's Miss Price? Oh, Miss Price, she takes siesta, I think. Have you been with the family long? Oh, long time. I am here since they are children. Now everything changed. Changed? How? All the time fighting. They fight for money. But also, I think, for something else. I think maybe for the father. To be father of children, one must be equal. Mr. Price, he have eyes only for one. Miss Nell. Anything she wants, she can have. She run away and marry. Miss Amanda stay here, work, work. Then Miss Nell come back. And everything is the same. Mr. Price give her everything. And yet, when Mr. Price die, Miss Nell do not even stay to bury her father. It is sad. Yes, better to be happy.
I quite like it. What do you want, Esther? I've told you I'm an ordinary girl. All I want is everything. <laughs> well, we're kind of in the same boat, aren't we? Hardly. <laughs> you had a fortune snapped out from under you, and I've got one dangling right in front of my nose. Is that what all the hate is about? Is it really enough to want someone dead? I think it is. There is a word for what you want. Mm -hmm. The word is suicide. The word is murder. Don't be foolish. If Amanda wants to kill herself, let Amanda kill herself. Edward? Hmm? Where's Mel? Mel got her share and went away. And why are all her clothes in my closet? Well, Mel had a lot of clothes in a lot of places. I guess she didn't need them anymore. Didn't need them? Why, what are you thinking? I was thinking that if everything turned out the way you wanted it to, I'd be a danger to you. You'd have to kill me. We're partners, remember? Now I am cold. day, an escort didn't drop a lady in the street. He brought her to a door. And you know that I have dinner with Edward. Of course. Are you my enemy, Esther? Is that what you think? Well, you've lived in this house for nearly two weeks, and I hardly know anything about you. That's odd, isn't it? For all I know, you might be an escaped murderer. Sit down, tell me about yourself. What is it that you want to know? Where you come from? What you've done? Go on, tell me. There isn't very much to tell. My mother died when I was five. My father drifted away. I was taken in by the county. I went to school. I worked at odd jobs. And finally, I went to nursing school. What drove you? Fear. I promised myself that I'd never go back to the life I had as a child. I'd do anything. Anything? Anything. Escape, Esther. Escape while you can. I'm not very good at riddles, Miss Price. Can't you feel the current, Esther? It'll trap you take you into deep water. This house is dying. So many locked doors. The past boarded up room by room. We belong to it, Edward and I. He'll use you, Esther, or try to. Miss Price, you must be very tired. Why don't you take a pill and have a really good night's rest? Ah, yes, the capsule. Now, that's a fair exchange. I offer you escape. You offer me oblivion. Good night, Esther. I can manage. Oh, how dare you. How dare you. Never. Never. 
Visitors of the mind. They are our most dangerous enemies, aren't they, Esther? Let me help you back to bed. I can manage. I'll bring you a cup of tea to help you relax. Just pour me some brandy, if you will. How do you fight them, Esther? The enemies of the mind. You must have been having nightmares. Don't you remember? Nothing. But where would you have been going in your sleep, Miss Price? I don't know, Esther. I don't know. I'm very tired. But you can sleep now. There's nothing to be afraid of. someone else should drink it. Did you expect to drink it, Edward? <laughs> no. No, I inherited his expensive tastes, but uh, not the money to afford them. As a matter of fact, that was the last burden that he put upon my shoulders. And you, my dear sister, were his 
happy accomplice. Nonsense. He saw your fatal weakness. Oh, yeah? Then what is that? Your self-pity. You wear it like a badge, like a beggar's sign. Forgive me, help me, for I cannot... All right, all right, all right. So sure. Damn, you're sure. And for a long time, I used to believe that. But it was all pretense, wasn't it, Amanda? We know that now, don't we? Come on, get off of it. We have the same secrets. And who else knows them? Oh, the dead. And they do keep secrets very well. Well, you, uh, you invited me here. What do you want? I want to make an arrangement with you. An arrangement? What kind, dear sister? You've always wanted this house. Take it. I hate it anyway. I'll double your allowance. You can live almost as well as you've always fancied. Well, I'm overwhelmed with your sudden outburst of generosity, my dear sister. But what corresponding gesture do you expect in return? Send Esther away. Esther? Why? She's an intruder. Intruders are dangerous. They learn things. It's too late, Amanda. Much too late. What do you want? I want it all. Everything. <laughs> We'd be paupers in a year. Not until I'm dead, Edward. Not until I'm dead. Of course. That could be arranged, couldn't it? I would say that basically it's only a matter of who does it. You are right. You are really preparing to kill me. Of course. If you wanted me dead, why didn't you let me go peaceably when I tried? Well, and then, as you tell me so very well, one must keep up appearances, mustn't one? So, when someone alerted the doctor, what could I do but act like the loving brother that, of course, I am? And there is one distinct advantage. I mean, Amanda, just think. What safer victim could there ever be than someone who has a record of suicide attempts? It was you. Thanks, Lydia. Hi, Doctor. I thought I'd just save a dime and come over and get Amanda's sleeping pill prescription. How is she? Mm, pretty good. How's that nurse working out? Oh, she's doing fine. But I'm, uh, I'm staying away. I think it's better that way. Perhaps. Here you are. Thank you. Doctor, uh, wouldn't you save a lot of time and trouble just to double this thing? Well, in view of your sister's history, it would hardly be wise. You know, if someone's really intent on destroying themselves, there's very little you can do to stop it, but one doesn't place a loaded weapon in their hands. Of course. Well, I'll, uh, I'll be particularly careful. Thanks again, Doc. See you. Miss Robinson, please bring in the file on Amanda Price. When was Miss Price's last prescription for sedatives? Ten days ago, 25 seconds ago, one and a half grains. Is that all, Doctor? Yes, yes. Just uh, make a similar entry for today. Thank you. surprised to find you in the garden. I seldom feel the inclination. It's a pity. Beautiful roses, wasting away with no one to enjoy them. Most of life is a waste, I found. Isn't it enough that it's a beautiful day? Perhaps it once was. 
When I was very small, before my mother died, I used to live in this garden. I used to lie on the path, my eyes half closed, and watch the colors of the roses blur and dance. I helped my father plant these roses. He was a god to me then. Why did it change? My sister stole him from me. So I took the pruning shears one night and I cut down all the roses, every one. They grew back again, but it was never the same. It was a sad garden full of brambles. Is that why you never visited or take roses into the house? Never, until today. Still trying to make peace with him. Too late. I think you must have loved him very much. He was so surprised to die. He'd forgotten that life is the one disease that's always fatal. One just never knows how it'll come, or when, or who. Waited and waited, never showed up. I had errands to do. I don't believe that. All right, I thought it was a bad idea. Why? Redford, how's the wife? Relax, will you, and smile. Why? I thought you hired me to do a job, not to be an easy afternoon in bed. Are you losing your nerve? The difference is that I've met Amanda. I know her now. I've saved her all of her life. If she wants to die, let her. You make it almost sound right. It is, Esther, it is. It's almost like an act of mercy. Sometimes I feel as if I'm becoming another person, someone I don't know. Esther, there's nothing to worry about, believe me. I've got to go. What you looking for? No, uh, I want some kind of poison to get rid of some uh, pests. Oh, uh, what are we talking about here? Rats, bugs, moles, big, medium, small. I got all kinds. Coyotes. Oh, hell, what you want is sodium cyanide. That's about the strongest thing you can get. All coyote needs is one taste, and he's dead right now. And this stuff don't fool around. That powerful, huh? Maybe I shouldn't take it. I mean, if it'll kill a coyote, it, it might kill a person. Oh, hell yes. If you got kids, you gotta keep this under lock and key. <laughs> you don't take no chances. Remember them Nazis? That's what they took if they got captured. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. One little capsule in the mouth. <laughs> Save the expense of a hanging. You want it? Yeah, I'll try it. Okay. I'm Dr. Thorne. Come in. You must be the nurse that Mr. Price engaged. Yes, I am. Is uh, Miss Price about? I believe she's taking a nap. And how is Miss Price these days? In your own judgment. She's been having nightmares. A couple of nights ago, I found her on the stairs. She had no idea of where she was. Sleepwalking? Absolutely terrified. <laughs> I should think so. Well, I gave Mr. Price a new prescription for sleeping capsules. Keep them in your possession. I understand. Leaving so soon, Doctor? I was just about to have some tea. Won't you join me? 
I'm sorry, Amanda, but uh, I'm due at the hospital. I just dropped in on my way. Dropped in? For what? To take my pulse? To see how you were getting along. Uh, would you mind if I went and made tea? That would be nice. And how am I getting along, Doctor? I assume Miss Harper has kept you up on my comings and goings? My rages, my fears? Nothing nearly so dramatic. What then? No more than the fact that occasionally you were a, a little moody. Moody? <laughs> I sing and dance all day long. Good God, Doctor, only idiots are not moody. Amanda, it's really not healthy for anyone to stay in so much. And what's so healthy about the outside, pray? Don't you read the papers? What else is out there but rape and robbery and deceit? And murder and greed and war. It just depends on what you see. Really, Amanda, why don't you give some thought to a trip, change of scene, get out of yourself for a bit? Where's your sister now? Why do you ask? Well, didn't she go back abroad? Perhaps she might enjoy a visit from you. <laughs> Glad you find it so amusing. <laughs> I'm sorry, Doctor. It struck me oddly. But by all means, you're right. I shall give it some thought. Perhaps I shall visit Nell. All right. All right. I have to go. Odd, isn't it? We've been thrown together, you, Edward, and I. Like strangers in a lifeboat. And who will survive? And who will die? And what did he promise you, Esther? Promise to be my executioner. If it were true, would I admit it? Perhaps. I suppose I want to trust you. And you don't. Is that why you haven't touched the wine? The Borgias used poison. Usually quick, effective, and without unseemly violence. No. 
Where are you? Where are you, father? I'm frightened. What frightened you, my child? Where are you? I'm frightened. I'm frightened. <laughs> Why should you be frightened, my child? I'm so sorry, father. Why should you be sorry? That I... I cut down the rose bushes. That was a terrible thing to do! And for it, you shall be punished! You will be punished! Last will and testament, I, James Glendon Price, being of sound mind, do hereby amend all earlier wills and testaments, whatever, to my weakling son, Edward, and my faithless daughter, Amanda, I leave nothing! To my beloved daughter, Nell, I do bequeath control of all my estate's monies and earthly possessions, hers to enjoy so long as she may live. James Glendon Price. Did something happen, Amanda? You seem dreadfully shook up. So you've won. <laughs> I must say, as sick as father may be, he writes a beautiful hand and expresses himself so clearly. <laughs> Don't you agree? I nursed him. My God, for over two years, I, I nursed him day and night. It's your choice, sister dear. I'm hardly responsible. And you had yours until your lover ran out. How dare you come back here and take everything I sleep for? If you be good children, you and Edward, I shan't let you suffer. I won't beg for it, Nell. No. Oh, pity. You may have to. Pride goes before fall, or so they say. Give it to me. Oh, I certainly will not. I said, give it to me. Oh, Amanda, don't you dare touch me. Amanda, you're crazy. Edward! Oh, Amanda! Oh, oh, oh. What's going on? Amanda! Walking. Now she always seems to be going somewhere in her sleep. The first time I found her on the stairs.
Tonight I found her shaking the cellar door. Edward, you've got to tell me what's down there. Well, how should I know? You know. I know you know. I think it's the reason that you want her dead. I don't think it's simply money. You're afraid that she's going to tell us something. How dare you question me? We are partners, remember? I haven't forgot. Well, that's good. I mean, it's not like I ask you to commit a crime. I just ask you to let nature take its course. Let it go easy. Easy? Yes, let her own demons kill her, whoever they may be. forgot. Dr. Thorne sent over a new batch of uh, sleeping capsules. Not enough for a lethal dose, unfortunately, but uh, perhaps it'll keep her from walking in her sleep. Was Edward. I didn't know what to do, so I called him. He's trash, Esther. Trash. Miss Price. You called me Amanda. I prefer it. Amanda. I'm so sorry that I frightened you. It wasn't you that frightened me. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Dr. Thorne sent over some new sleeping tablets. Do you want to take a couple? Set them on the table. First, I'll try some brandy. Will you drink it? Yes. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Just leave the pills. I may need them. nothing to worry about. Just a mild allergy. Meanwhile, this will help. What a lovely crucifix. You must be very proud of it. Miss Price gave it to me. Oh, I had no idea that Miss Amanda was so devout. Oh, no, it belonged to Miss Nell before she go away. You know her well? Miss Nell, I mean? Oh, yes, since she was little girl. She left rather suddenly, didn't she? Oh, very. One day I come to house and everything is changed. Mr. Price is dead and Miss Nell has gone away. Miss Amanda says she fly away in big plane. But not to stay for her father's funeral. I do not understand. Yes, well, there's nothing more we can do for you today, so... Now, if you get a severe attack, come back. Well, thank you, Dr. Thorne. Thank you. Goodbye, Mrs. Gonzalez. Miss Robinson, give me the file on James Price, please. Yes, sir. I want to check the date on his death certificate. Mm -hmm. Here it is. June 13th, last year. Massive coronary. Get me Charlie Wyndham on the phone. Down at the travel agency. Thanks. Hello, Charlie. I want a favor. Well, it may be important. I want to know if Nell Price made any air travel arrangements through your agency. Yeah, Nell Price, old man Price's youngest daughter, leaving Los Angeles June 12th or June 13th of last year. Now, if you have no record of it, she may have made the arrangements directly with the airline. I want to know that, too. No, I haven't gone into the private eye business. It's a personal matter. 
Okay, Charlie. Thank you. Oh, excuse, I'm late. I go to doctor. Don't you feel well? Oh, no. Doctor say I'm okay. Oh, good. Is Miss Price up yet? I do not see her. Well, perhaps she's still asleep. She had a late night. Miss Price. Amanda? Something's wrong. Amanda's gone. She's taken the car. Well, that's rather obvious, isn't it, Esther? The point is, when? She could be a hundred miles from here by now. But where would she go? That's something we'd better find out. Come on. You know, it's so strange, because she was panicked by something in the dream. But when you left, she was perfectly calm. Why didn't you just give her the pills? I left them on her night table. She had brandy instead. I thought she was going you to sleep. Thought... Edward. What's in those pills? I don't know. Whatever they put in pills. You fixed them, didn't you? You changed God them. God damn it, Esther. You're beginning to sound just like Amanda. Don't you change things on me. Or have you already? Get the car. me, Father. Are you there, Father? Speak, my child. I hardly know where to begin. I haven't been in a church since I was a child. So many little sins to confess. Lies. Jealousies. Stealing even small things from my father. I kept them hidden in the back of my closet. Pieces of my father all wrapped in a handkerchief. They were little things. Even a child could carry them.
committed a sin too great to be. I've frightened the father. What's wrong? Go on. All my life, I hated my sister. She had everything I ever wanted. Only you and God and I know. No one else. No one. Thank you, Father. Charlie. Oh, well, I'm sorry, I just got back from the hospital. What did you find out on Nell Price? Zero. International flights, domestic carriers. Hell, I even checked the town cabbie. No record anywhere. Maybe a friend picked her up. Maybe. Listen, Doc, I sure hope it's all that important. I could have shot 18 holes this afternoon. The least you could do is give me some free medical advice. Well, I can give it to you right now. Don't eat so much. You're getting fat. Thank you, Charlie. I do appreciate all your effort. Goodbye. No, don't you come. If I go in alone, you know, it'll seem more innocent. There's no need for you to get involved. I'll take the risk. All right. All right, but you must give her the pills tonight. What if she refuses? Then call me. It has to be tonight. We're through waiting. Um, by the way, how will I be paid? Will it be in cash?
evening, Doctor. Good evening, Lieutenant. Just coffee, please. Doctor. Uh, yes, I've got a problem, and I, I don't know what to do with it. Oh, uh, yeah? All I have is a guess, a suspicion. But I'd like you to come to the Price home with me. I think Amanda Price is in great danger. On what grounds? Well, as I said, all I have is a guess. But I think it's because she has knowledge of a crime that's already been committed. What kind of a crime? Murder. You wouldn't want to be left behind, would you, Jethro? You'd be too lonely. We've been together so long. You wouldn't like taking tea with strangers. Amanda, I know you're in there. Please answer me. Amanda, answer me. What do you want? Where have you been? I've been looking for you everywhere. I had errands to do. Amanda, please let me in. I have to talk to you. I'm not frightened anymore. Here, yeah, mail these in the morning for me. If you leave me, I'm going to take a pill and go to bed. You mustn't. Why mustn't I? They're poisoned, I'm sure of it. Edward. <laughs> I'm not surprised. He hired you to kill me, didn't he? Yes. And you couldn't. We could have been such good friends.
Yes. Edward, this is Esther. I think you'd better come to the house right away. Did Amanda come back? Yes. She came back. She's dead. just left with the body. What happened? She was determined to kill herself. I tried to stop her. Oh, my God. My God. And after all the things that I tried to do, we failed it. And in spite of it, we failed. The best plans don't always succeed, Edward. You did your best. I didn't. It's just oh, so much has happened. Maybe a drink uh, will help steady your nerves. Some of that uh, brandy your sister stored in the cellar. No whiskey. The cellar door is locked. I think you'll find it open.
think we have quite a lot to talk about. You see, Edward, Amanda left two letters, a will and a full confession. She finally said what she had to say. I couldn't do it. I had to tell them all I know. I'm sorry, Edward. So many years. Once they were little children. And now they are all gone. Only he is still here. Let him stay in the silence. Uh, I hope you come back sometime. Never. 